Hey campers, Stamet here along with my convivial camp compadre Frank. We're uh, here for the latest of the series of scouting at home videos done by the Dan Beard Council. And today we wanted to talk about first aid kits and the kit that may, should, be in your home. This is a time of year where everybody seems to have health and safety on the mind, so we wanted to make sure that you have a chance to get an idea of some things to put into a first aid kit in your house. Not everybody has access to one of these super posh, big old responder, ultra deluxe medical bags, so we thought we'd show you how to do one of your own. Ah! Now! Frank's got a, uh, a list that we pulled up here, and what we're going to do is just show you some basic things that ought to already be in your home or are very easily accessible at any of the stores in the area, and we're going to put together a first aid kit for you. Now, what does the first aid kit go in? You want something that's not necessarily waterproof, but can keep, you know, pests out and is securable. So some people like to use these plastic, like the Tupperware, the plastic, the Sterilite tubs. If you have to, you can always just get a jumbo Ziploc bag. There's nothing wrong with it. Use a shoebox if you don't have anything else laying around. Scout is thrifty. There's all kinds of options for you. Let's go through the list. Frank, let's see what we've got. So Start wherever you want. I pulled up the Red Cross website. Uh, do we have two absorbent compressed dressings? Absorbent compressed dressings. Hmm. Let's see. So, I have two. Yeah. Or is that these? Yeah, I think it is these two. <laughs> Not one, but two in the kit. What's next? 25 adhesive bandages. <gasps> assorted size. Assorted, ag assorted adhesive bandages. Mm hmm. To uh, help with your boo boos and boo hoos. One adhesive cloth taped 10 yards by one inch. Ah, okay. Well, it's a little wider than the one inch, but anything that's an adhesive cloth tape helps quite a bit to secure all of those bandages and compresses. Five antibiotic ointment packets, approximately one gram. Okay, fair enough. Now, oh, you say, oh no, we don't have those sitting around. That's okay. Any brand of TAO or triple antibiotic ointment will do. We'll even show it to you so the brand name doesn't face out. Any TAO will work. Go whatever name brand you so choose, or your store brand. We'll just throw in an actual dispensing tube. Two packets of aspirin. Hmm. Now, aspirin is hit or miss. You could sub in aspirin, or an ibuprofen, or an acetaminophen, or whatever works like that. But something to meet a similar goal will work. We'll just take that as is. Imagination. Go ahead. Uh, one emergency blanket. <gasps> An emergency blanket or survival wrap keeps the heat in, keeps the sun off, multi-purpose. Very important. One breathing barrier. Two pairs of <laughs> non-latex gloves. Ah, okay. Gloves are important. You can go more than two pairs if you want. Go a whole packet if you want. So we have an equal amount of left and right <laughs> left and right-handed gloves. Joke there. We like to keep these in their own separate bag. You don't have to, we just recommend that you do. Plus, more bags is useful. You never know if you're going to need to store other things. So, kind of roll those in nice and tight. Scout is thrifty, especially with space. Gloves, set. You can arrange these in your kit however you want. It's like your own little game of 3D Tetris. <laughs> Two hydrocortisone ointment packets. Again, we've opted for the Scout size and just use the entire tube. Uh, one three-inch gauze roll. Mm. We have a couple of different options here. So uh, as far as rolling bandages, we have several. Um, many of the kits that you'll find with multi-size gauze, you can kind of pick and choose. Gauze rolls are still important, though. They're absorbent. They're very important. Okay? Uh, one roller bandage, four inches wide. Well, the other side that I use. So one of those that I just put in was the gauze. The other was the roller bandage. Good. A three inch by three inch sterile gauze pad. Oh, we've got several of those. So now, nonstick works out. So we've got gauze pads and some nonstick compresses. Worthy additions. Okay. Five sterile gauze pads. Mm. No, I just threw some of those in. I'm jumping ahead. That's okay. So we saw the one that I just threw was the jumbo, and then I have another four gauze pads. Go. And four old thermometer or any thermometer. In this case, we've opted away from the mouth parts. Hmm. I'm alive! Two triangular bandages. Not one, but two. Sealed. 
some tweezers. <gasps> beep, 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 beep. My tweezer noise. And an emergency first aid guide. So, the first aid guide is already available to you in your Cub Pack or your Cub Scout manuals, in your Boy Scout handbook, or in the first aid merit badge kit. There's also a wealth of information online. Make sure and consult your parents before accessing the internet. And to add to the wonders, we're also throwing in some alcohol wipes or alcohol swabs, just because sanitation is your friend. Excellent. And you know what? I think I'm going to keep that great big bag in there just for kicks. So, again, you don't have to have a tub just like this, and you can modify and add whatever other additions to the, uh, the first aid kit in your home that will suit you and your family's needs. Neat. So we hope that this has given you a good start on doing your own first aid kit at home, making sure that all these things are in and set, and that every member of your household knows where this will be stored and how to easily access and use all of the items therein. We'll see you all tomorrow for another fun, fun scouting at home video. Until then, stay safe and have a great day.